Hello and welcome to episode 4 of Kentucky Talks. This is your girl Soroya here and today's episode I am very very excited to talk about. We are going to be talking about what to do to actually take care of your mental health. Now, First things first, I want to start off by saying that mental health and mental illness are two very different things. Do they coincide with each other? Do they connect with each other? Yes, but they are very two different things. So let's start off with the definition of mental health first. So mental health is a state of well-being in which the individual realizes his or her own abilities can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. And this definition is from the American Psychiatric Association. Now, the definition of mental illness. It is a health condition involving changes in emotion, thinking, or behavior, or it could be a combination of all of these. It is also associated with distress and or problems functioning in social, work, or family activities. So, it is not just the absence of mental illness, it's essential to the overall health and quality of life. That is what mental health is. I Let me repeat that so that you guys can get it. Mental health is not just the absence of mental illness. It's essential to the overall health and quality of life. Now, how do you go about actually maintaining the overall health and quality of life? For those that probably aren't as active on social media, you will know that self-care or self-love has become a very big thing ever since this whole pandemic has started uh you see people with these trendy videos of these aesthetic looking showers on instagram and people doing their day in the life on instagram which by the way the way they make those videos on instagram is is top notch i'm actually jealous so what is self care Self-care is taking time to do things that help you live well and improve both your physical and mental health. Now, there is different methods to self-care, and I will break these down into different categories. The first category is to first get regular exercise, move your body more. One way you could do this is to take a walk to your favorite visually pleasing spot. I live in Brooklyn, New York, so a visually pleasing spot for me may be going to the nearby park and sitting in an area where I know that the sunset view is just gorgeous to me. Another way of getting some regular exercise is to play some music and have a solo dance party by yourself. Or if you live with a roommate, have your roommate join you in your dance party. Moving your body and getting exercise doesn't always mean having to go to the gym. There's many reasons why people aren't able to go to the gym. One, because they probably can't afford um, a gym membership at the moment, depending on what their situation is. Two, there's a lot of people who deal with social anxiety and the fact of seeing other people around you that could possibly be staring at you as you work out in a somewhat tight closed space that could be pretty scary so those are just two options of ways that you can physically move your body around and get some exercise in number two eat healthy regular meals and stay hydrated now For someone like me who deals with disordered eating, this looks very different. Um, My disordered eating looks like me not having enough meals in a day or is binge eating. There's no real gray area. 
So these are just certain things that I do that help me and maybe they'll help you as well, even if you don't deal with disordered eating. The first thing is to set alarms for the times of day where you should be eating. Now, according to medical professionals, and even my nutritionist said this to me, people should be eating at least five meals a day. So breakfast is the first meal, then you have a snack, then lunch, another snack, and then dinner. And if you want to have a dessert snack after dinner, that's fine. So that'll equal to six meals instead of five. So set alarms for the times of the day where you should be having these meals. Now, of course, you can set these times to whatever times fit into your schedule because obviously everyone's schedule is very different. And number two, incorporate your favorite foods into your everyday meals. This is something that I love that my nutritionist did with me. And she sat me down and asked me what are some things that I already like to eat. So let's say, for example, for breakfast, something that I like to eat is turkey sausage on an English muffin with some jelly. Or I'll have another option of like a bagel with cream cheese with some turkey bacon is different options for everybody number three make rest a priority now rest is not just something that is important for your physical body but it is literally a god-given commandment to rest And my church, my pastor, we recently did a series on the abundant mindset. And the last thing that he talked about was rest. And he brought up uh, the book of Genesis where God created the world in six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. He rested from the work that he did because he saw that the work he did was good. So if God allowed himself to rest after finishing his work, then we should be doing the same thing. It is very important to listen to your body. Very important. Our body can literally tell us when we need to have a break. And here are just a few ways of how our body can actually do that. Your skin will start to break out. It could either be in pimples, blackheads, even hives, rashes. Your skin will start to turn red or it'll start to discolor. You feel tired all the time, very extreme fatigue. Your hair will start to shed. Your blood sugar will start to feel like it's low. You'll get random shivers in your body. You'll have fainting spells, body aches, and on the outside, you'll just start to physically look worn out. Next category is to set goals and priorities according to your needs. Now again, everyone needs is different. Everyone's level of self-care is different, again, depending on what you need. So I'm going to share examples for me for three different things, physical movement, sleep, and food. So an example for me for physical movement would be to set aside times in a day to take a walk around the block when I've been sitting down for too long. So I would like to say that I live in a very aesthetically looking neighborhood, which thanks to gentrification, it looks that way. (laughs) But at times where I feel like I've been stuck inside for too long, because even being stuck inside your house can affect your mental health in a negative way. Yes, your house could be a safe space, but it could also turn into a space where you just feel stuck and you aren't able to do anything productive. Next example is for sleep. So I deal with feeling just exhausted all the time, no matter how many hours of sleep I get. And I also deal with the struggle of it taking a very long time for me to actually fall asleep. I've been dealing with insomnia since I was a kid. 
So one thing I would do is that I would lay down in my bed by a certain time instead of an immediate time to be asleep by. So for example, let's say my goal is that I want to be asleep by midnight. So instead of just like immediately throwing myself into bed at midnight, knowing that I'm not going to fall asleep at that time directly, I will instead physically prepare myself to lay in bed at 10 o'clock. Because in all honesty, for me, it takes me about a good hour, sometimes two hours to actually get really sleepy when I'm already laying in bed to fall asleep. And the next example is with food. And this is something my nutritionist actually told me, which is very helpful. And it was encouraging also. If you don't have the energy to eat a full meal, replace it with a healthy, fulling snack instead. So, with my work schedule, it's a bit hard to catch a break in the middle of the day. So, I work in an after-school program. And in the morning, I am at a location, which is a high school, from 10 a.m. to 1 o'clock. And then in the afternoon, I am in an elementary school from 1.30 to 5.45. So, again, there's not that much of a time where I can have a little bit of a break with myself. What I started doing is I was bring snacks with me. The latest snack I brought with me was a bag of baby carrots. Carrots is one of my favorite vegetables. And as a sweet snack, I bought me a bag of peanut M&Ms. It's all about balance. (laughs) The next method of practicing self-care is to practice gratitude. And the one important thing I will say about this is to be grateful for the little things. And... To say things about yourself that is like, that is like things that you have already accomplished that you probably have overlooked. Like the fact that you cooked or cleaned for the first time in a while. That you have a body that signals to you when you need help. That you got at least one productive thing done for the whole day. And that you had the strength to take a shower. You had the strength to wash your face, you had the strength to take out the trash, you had the strength to get up today. Even if you stayed inside the whole day, you had the strength to get up from your bed, you made your bed, you maybe cleaned your house for a bit. Be grateful for the little things because the little things are still big things and that's okay. The next thing of how to practice self-care is to focus on positivity. Now, when I think of positivity, I think of practicing or saying to yourself positive affirmations. Now, for those that don't know what an affirmation is, an affirmation is pretty much a quote or statement that you repeat to yourself that it falls in line with your values, it falls in line with stuff that you want to work on personally, and it's almost like like you're prophesying to yourself, kind of. That is, is a self-proclamation for your own heart. So, some examples of affirmations that I say to myself every now and then is, the little things are still big things. I am strong in mind, body, and spirit. I care for myself daily. My mental health challenges don't define who I am. And the last thing on different methods of self-care is to stay connected. Now, as someone, I'm about to call myself out here, as someone whose love languages are quality time and physical touch. Uh, What I struggle with is isolating myself. I know it's, it's such a contradiction. So staying connected with people, having a community of people around you is so essential to 
your mental health and it is a key part of doing self-care for yourself. Now, you can't just let anybody into your circle. You can't just let anybody into your life. So the people who you should be letting into your circle are people that you feel comfortable with. People that you feel you can tell them anything without it being forced. People that you feel help you solve your problems. People that you feel make you feel valued. And people that take your concerns seriously. You may not even take them seriously yourself, but if they take those concerns seriously, then that is someone that you want to have in your life in your circle of people that you want to stay connected to. Now, a question you probably have is, how do I stay connected? We've already went down a bit of a checklist of what to look for in people that we want to be connected with. Now, how do we stay connected? First step is to make a list of people who make you feel like all of the things that I listed before. People you feel comfortable with, that you can tell anything to them, they help you solve your problems, they make you feel valued, and they take your concerns seriously. Next step is to commit yourself to call, text, or meet up with them on a schedule that's reasonable for both of you. Now again, everyone's schedules looks different, And even if you can't meet up with them in person, like how you want to, there is Zoom, there is like FaceTime on the phone. What is it? I have an Android. So if I wanted to FaceTime someone, I would use Zoom or WhatsApp. WhatsApp has that feature. And send a call or a text just to to take that step of like really checking in with them. Share what's on your mind honestly and openly. This is so important because if you want people to be there for you, if you want people to be able to help you solve your problems, if you want people to understand where you're at when it comes to your mental space, it's important to really be honest about how you're feeling because excuse my language, but if you just give people half-assed answers of what they, of what you think they should hear, then it doesn't help them help you, and it doesn't help you help yourself. When you talk, also listen. So, I know this probably doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but when you talk, You should also be listening, not just listening to yourself, but then also listening to the other person that you're having a conversation with. And this is how I found out of like the way that I talk about myself sometimes is actually not the healthiest. And it wasn't until I found the right people in my community that pointed it out to me. And that includes like my therapist and my psychiatrist that is like, oh, okay, I really need to change the way that I talk about myself. And it was in moments where I was just being very honest and very vulnerable that I was able to find that stuff out with people that I have um, stayed connected with. And next, make social plans. Now, Social plans does not mean it has to be like this big old gathering like where you go to a club or a party or whatever. It doesn't have to be all that. It could be meeting up in your local coffee shop. It could be meeting up with someone. It's at some street. Window shopping. That's that's a great idea to do. You could go window shopping. You don't have to go inside of a store, or maybe you do go inside of a store, just look around, make it a fun day, try on some clothes. Go to the local park, walk around, or even just take a walk around the park. Um, if you live in an area that has a body of water, like a pier or something, take a walk along the pier, have a seat on the bench and just talk. Or you can go to each other's houses, make a little shakuchi board, um, watch some, watch euphoria, maybe, 
watch Sex in the City. I don't know what other shows out right now. Girlfriends. You could watch some Girlfriends. Maybe some Murder Mystery Docs on Netflix. I don't know. But being social, having social plans can look different for everybody. And it doesn't have to be a big thing. Those are just some examples that I was throwing out there to help you better with that. All right, that is it for episode four of Kintsugi Talks. I really hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did making it. This was something that was requested for me to talk about. And for those that did request it, I would love to hear your guys' feedback by rating my podcast, sharing it with people. And if you follow me on social media, send me a DM. Let me know what you think about it. And until then... I will see you in the next episode. God bless.